ho, 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 ho. Mary. Ah, just kidding. Just kidding. Good afternoon everyone and welcome to another episode of Adam's Eats. How are we doing? I hope you all had a fantastic Christmas and you're looking forward to the new year. Hope Santa kind of bought what you wanted, got you know, caught up with family. Um, I hope you have lots of cheer, you're full up with lots of food. I know I am. I mean if you could see down here at the minute, I've got a right of porridge coming on. Just to let you know I'm back into the swing of things now. Had a couple of days off and um, as you saw from my bread sauce recipe. There was no video up on Boxing Day because of my schedule, my work, and just kind of fitting everything in. I just couldn't get around to doing a video for that day. But we're back to normal now. It's Friday, so I've got a nice little recipe for you today. And it's a New Year's recipe, great for kind of parties and sharing. And it's great for those cheese lovers out there like me. Okay, we're not into the new year yet, so we don't have to kind of go all like healthy and salads and rabbit food, all right? You know, we're in the kind of party moment at the minute, so that's what we're going to do today. And it's a really stonking little recipe, really simple to make, and it's baked camembert, which is kind of put into a loaf, bake it, and we're going to serve that with some little miniature Hasselback potatoes. And we're going to season those with some garlic butter, and they're going to be absolutely delicious, finished off with some honey, and it's just a really nice party dish. So without further ado, if you press that pause button now, make a list of those ingredients and we'll get cracking. Right then, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make our Hasselback potatoes. Now, this can be a little bit labor intensive, um, but I've got a really simple trick to make it much more easier. Now, I used to just kind of slice all the way through and just kind of judge how far I'd go, but I've actually since found that if you use two wooden spoons, there's a way that you can do it so that you just can make it a lot quicker. Now what we do is we've got basically got to cut slits all the way down the potato, but not all the way to the bottom. And what they'll do is they'll fan out and they'll absorb all the flavor and they'll go really nice and crisp. And um, so all you need to do um, is just, I'll just move the rest of them to one side. You take two wooden spoons, put them at opposite ends like so, and then you put your potato in between and then you take a sharp knife and then you just go all the way through until your knife hits the uh, wooden spoons. That way you're not gonna go all the way through. Okay, you just keep going all the way along the potato. Okay, and what you should end up with is nice little ridges running all the way across the potato and they've not gone all the way through the bottom. So you wanna repeat that with the rest of your potatoes and you'll pop them on a baking tray. Once your potatoes are done and they're on a baking tray, you wanna get your oven preheated to gas mark six, get it nice and hot so we can get them in the oven, get them cooking straight away. And then on this pan, I've just put it on a lowish heat and I put in my butter, uh, your olive oil, and what this does is the, the oil just stops the butter from burning. So you get that butter flavor running through the potato, but you don't get that burnt butter taste because the olive oil will stop that happening because burnt butter is meh, it's not very really nice at all. Okay, so as the butter's melting, you want to get in your garlic cloves, and all you want to do is just break them in half because that just helps release some of that garlic flavor because all we're looking for is the flavor in the butter because uh, if you put sliced garlic in there and you brush it over the top, the garlic's just gonna burn. So once the garlic's in, just let it bubble away for just a couple of minutes so that garlic infuses into the butter and then we'll brush it over the top of the potatoes and get them in the oven. Okay, so once your butter's melted and the garlic's infused through it, just take it off the heat and then taking either a pastry brush or like I always use, a good clean paintbrush because I just find them much easier. Just wanna brush this butter all over each potato, just get it in the cracks. So you'll get all that garlic flavor will just kind of seep into it. And we're gonna do it again of halfway through the cooking process because this first basting will just crisp them up and fan them out, but then we'll give it a second basting which will really kind of ramp up the flavor. Okay, so I've basted each one and you just wanna finish with some pepper, a bit of salt. They okay, probably don't need too much because there's gonna be salt in the butter. Okay, so they're seasoned up nicely. Let's get them in the oven. Okay, so they're on gas mark six. You wanna cook them for about 25 minutes. We'll come back and we'll give them a second basting and then we'll put them in for the rest of the cooking time. Right, so as you can see here, I've got a nice cob loaf here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this tasty cheese disc of camembert and we're going to plonk it inside the bread like so. Now, basically what you wanna do is you want to give yourself an idea, just kind of eyeball it. Just take the bottom, the cardboard disc thing, just so you can kind of get an idea as to how far you want to cut down. So you want it a bit bigger than that, so I'm gonna go for about there, I think. And basically you just wanna cut the top off. 
Then you're taking your knife, you just want to cut around. And then it's simply just a case of removing enough of the bread to fit your camembert in. And just plonk it in. Right, so we've got the camembert inside, and all you want to do is take a sharp knife and just cut long slits, uh, about an inch apart, down the middle. Okay, because what we're going to do is we're going to poke garlic and rosemary in there. Take your garlic clove. God, why is it so hard to peel? And just slice it and then just poke the garlic into randomly across the top of the camembert and take your rosemary. Now be careful with rosemary because it's powerful stuff, right? You put too much in, it's going to taste like medicine. Um, but it's really fragrant and delicious, goes really well with garlic. And you probably want one and a half sprigs, something like that. Tuck them in. That's it, pop the lid back on. Now that is ready for the oven. And um, we're gonna put this in at the last sort of 15 minutes uh, when the potato's almost cooked, uh, so it's all ready together. Right, so it's been about 25 minutes. Let's get these out. Have a look. As you can see, they're just really kind of fanning out now. They're starting to open up. And that's when you wanna get in your second layer of flavor. So just give them another basting with that garlic butter. Okay, and then you just want to pop these back in again for about another 15 minutes and then we'll finish it off with some honey over the top and at the same time we'll put our bread bowl in as well and then we'll cook it for a further 15 minutes so i'll see you in 15 minutes okay right so it's been another 15 minutes let's get these out okay so what we're going to do is we're just going to move these two to one side ouch 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 use a pair of tongs ouch <laughs> ouch Okay, and then you just want to pop your bread on the side, like that. Use a separate baking tray if you haven't got enough room. Drizzle the top with olive oil. Just a trickle, you don't need too much. And place your lid back on top. And then just drizzle some runny honey on your potatoes. Right over the top. And this will add a really nice sweet contrast to that rich buttery cheese and the garlic. It'll just be really, really good. Now I know because my oven is absolute tosh that I'll put these in and they won't go nice and brown on the top so I will have to finish them under a grill. If you've got a normal oven the honey will go nice and glazed and crispy and it'll just be really really delicious. So we'll put this back in the oven for again for about another 15-20 minutes till the potatoes are fully cooked. Okay and at that point as well the cheese should be nice and bubbling and melted inside the bread as well. If it isn't, uh, just take the potatoes out, put them on a plate to one side, and then just give the cheese another five, 10 minutes in the oven. Right then guys, I've got it out of the oven, put everything on a board. I'm just gonna show you what it looks like inside this puppy. Right, this is, this is a moment for cheese heads, right? If you love your cheese, ooh. Gooey and soft and delicious. Now you see guys, as with most of my recipes, you know that once I've finished it, I'll give it a taste. Because a lot of the stuff that I make, I'm actually just making it because I'm having it for dinner. So, you know, it's nothing kind of out of the ordinary. This is what I'm normally having. But sometimes I make a dish and I've got to wait because tomorrow when there's better daylight, I need to keep this so I can take a picture of it for the thumbnail. This kind of image you just see before the video starts. So if I go chomping into this now, I'm going to have nothing to take a photo of. Or would, I will, it'll just be a load of cheese rind and crumbs. So yeah, the temptation to just dive straight into this is absolutely immense. But I shall resist. Um, and also, a little tip for you as well, any kind of leftover butter that you've got that you use to base the potatoes, don't throw it away, use it, you know, for extra indulgence, as if you don't have enough already. You know, you can use it, get the brush, base that on the top of the bread, and use that to dip in as well. And everything is edible, the rind's edible, you can eat the bowl on the outside, you know, once you've kind of chomped your way through and use these potatoes to dip in, and no washing up really. Oh, I, just, I can't even just have like a little bit. No, no, put the lid back on, Go to bed, good night, I'll see you tomorrow. And then I'll eat you. Well, there we have it folks. Nice, simple recipe, easy to do, and it looks impressive as well. I mean, this is great for kind of party sharing, New Year's Eve, get togethers, all that kind of stuff. And you know, this will feed probably about two, maybe three people. So if you've got more coming over and you want to do some more, just make up a few of them, you know, it's no bother. I will be honest though, I, when I was developing this recipe, I had one the other day and I was just like, yeah, I'm just going to eat a lot. And I did, yeah, I ate the whole thing, the bread, the cheese, all the potatoes, everything. It's ridiculous. Like, I mean, in the new year, I've got to look at my weight. I, I'm not a big guy, I'm quite skinny, 
but just I've got this rotund little paunch just sits on my front and it's all the wine, it's all the cheese, meats, all that kind of stuff, it just sits on my front. My girlfriend calls it the Grinch belly, right, that's what it is. So yeah, I've got to kind of stop myself and just, just hold back and just, just do some sit-ups or something. I suppose if I do more sit-ups now, can I have more cheese? No, 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 serious, serious. Got to, got to sort it out. Well, that's it for today, guys. Thanks ever so much for watching. Hope you liked the video, hope you liked the recipe. Um, please leave a comment below as well, you know, if you've got any suggestions and stuff. And, you know, like, share and subscribe if you like my videos. Again, I'll leave all my social media links in the description below. Uh, but if you look down here, these are the profiles I'm currently on. So I'll see you guys next time. Adios!